Hey everybody, uh, today we're going to be talking about cleaning the siding on your house without using a power washer for people that don't have a power washer. What you'll need to clean your siding. Um, the main thing here is crud cutter house wash. Um, it attaches to the hose like that and um, it has two settings on it. Um, rinse, which actually just the water from the hose just sprays through it in a, um, a strong burst. And then the wash setting, which um, mixes the water from the hose with the um, with the soap inside. Um, and this stuff works great. Um, this, uh, don't pay attention to the bottle, um, I actually just added to this spray bottle just so I wasn't switching spray bottles, um, throughout the whole process, but, uh, what you want is, um, some kind of bathroom cleaner with bleach, and, um, that is for, I'm talking about this type of siding, um, and then a brush, um, this kind of brush from a dustpan set um, with the bristles are somewhere between soft and rigid. You don't want rigid um, and you don't want super soft bristles. So the kind from a dustpan usually works really well. However, I have to warn you that after you're done using it, for this purpose, for scrubbing, um, it's not going to be any use anymore to, uh, for with a dustpan. So, um, and obviously the hose is also on your list of things you need. Uh, the other thing you're need, you're going to need is a ladder. I have an extension ladder and when it's fully extended, it is 12 and a half feet long. However, for the house that I'm cleaning, I haven't had to extend it all the way. Okay, so getting started, this is the kind of siding that I'm talking about. I'm talking about specifically soffit. Uh, the process for doing this is you're going to take your crud cutter, like I said before, and you're going to switch it to the rinse setting. And you're just going to soak, you're just going to soak a section of this. Um, and you want to do a section, um, like this or less a section about this size or half this size at a time because what you're gonna do is you're gonna spray spray it down with water to soak it then you're gonna spray it down again with the crud cutter you're gonna spray it down again with the crud cutter formula and then you're going to take your Tylex and your brush and your I like with those two things I like to start low and scrub it in as best I can spray it and scrub it in and try to reach as high as I can so that way when I get up on the ladder I know how high I can go show you a before shot um, up close this is what the siding looks like before using the formula and the technique of scrubbing it out. All right, so what I was saying before about the ladder and its height, my ladder is 12 and a half feet tall. Um, I haven't had to extend it 12 and a half feet the whole time I've been doing this. I'm almost, I'm pretty much done. Um, I haven't had to even extend it to 12, maybe 11 and a half, as in it has one level of living area, um, and then like a small upstairs storage space and a crawl space so you can't really tell from look you're not gonna be able to really tell but I mean it's not it doesn't go up that high um, so it's and the upstairs space the storage space doesn't go the whole perimeter of the house so there's only been a few um, parts of the siding that have been actually that tall um, and anyway, I showed you a before a little while ago. This is an example of the after. 
Um, this is after applying the crud cutter formula, rinsing it before and after. So you are mixing chemicals. I wanted to make a note of that. I'm wearing just regular sunglasses. It would be a good idea to wear some kind of eye protection. Um, safety goggles would be better than just sunglasses. I should be wearing better eye protection. And then if you're sensitive to chemicals like that, a face mask, which actually everybody should probably be wearing that. Um, I should be. I'm setting a bad example. Um, and uh, it said somewhere about this crud cutter formula that um, you're not supposed to leave it on too long. You're not supposed to actually let it dry. You're just supposed to let it soak for a, a little while. It says specifically on the side how long you're supposed to let it sit because... If you let it dry, there's a danger of getting soap scum or soap residue left behind on the siding, which can actually mix with the dirt, the dust, and the mildew to create like a brand new stain. That you, you'll, so you'll have to go back over it. Um, but that's all it means is you have to go back over it. It's not going to permanently damage anything if you le accidentally leave it on too long. But it's just better to follow the directions on the thing and get it off and so I actually wanted to give you a quick example um, I mean it's kind of self-explanatory but you know I just wanted to show exactly what I'm talking about um, I just sprayed a small area right here if you can see it and then you're just gonna want to scrub it out you can see the mildew here if you look close um, right there we go up here and you can just scrub it it comes off pretty easily and um, that was crud cutter mixed with this. Um, but just to show you what I'm talking about, you just spray small area at a time. And I laid it on pretty thick there. You don't have to spray that much. But, and then you just scrub it. And that's, that's about how it looks right there. And that's even before doing the second rinse. So there you go.